I've never been to a brain gym, and I think it would be fu a fun experience. Um, so brain gyms off obviously play on a fear that by not being mentally engaged, we will somehow, you know, it's a use it or lose it kind of thing. And there is a grain of truth to this, which is that one of the things that you can do to keep your brain uh, happy and functioning well as you get older is to have a mentally engaged lifestyle. So the number one correlate of retained cognitive function as people get older is educational status. And it's not clear whether that's because being educated gives you the tools to lead a more engaged life, or whether maybe if you're a more intellectually engaged, uh, engaged person, you might be the kind of person who would go to college and graduate school. So it's not, you know, it's a chicken egg problem. But in either case, that's the number one correlate. Um, in general, individual th tasks that you learn when you play brain games uh, and you go to brain gyms tend to only increase your capacity at that particular task or tasks of that type, and they tend to lead to small benefits. And so I think a lot of these exercises don't lead to large benefits. Now it could be that doing a lot of these different things is something like a full body workout, and it could be that there's some moderate benefit. Uh, but I think the people who go to those should really remember not only the intellectual principle, right, a, a sound mind, but also the sound body principle. And so I think any such gym should include what we talked about earlier, fitness training. So there are different kinds of cognitive and memory loss that occur with aging. Um, certain kinds of memory loss, are, such as um, um, forgetting where your car keys are, are part of the normal process of getting older. And in fact, memory peaks surprisingly early at the age of 30 and then declines gradually with time. So forgetting where your keys are is not uh, a cause of particular concern. And then there's dementia, which is forgetting, say, that you, um, you know, like the the old saw goes that if you forget where your glasses are, that's normal memory loss. If you forget the fact that you wear glasses, that's dementia. And so there are differing degrees of this. So, so just normal memory loss is not a cause of concern. Um, it's not well understood exactly what physically underlies this, although um, plausible candidates are loss of the brain's ability to form new connections or to easily um, um, uh, modulate the weight of the connections between nerve cells. Those are uh, called synaptic weights. And so those would be candidates for why the brain seems to be less plastic in certain ways as we get older. Uh, but it's not super well understood. Now there's another category of memory loss, this uh, severe decline in the form of dementia. And the thing that's understood there is that you can look in the brains of people who um, after death or, or, or diagnosed as having Alzheimer's disease, and they have plaques and tangles that appear to be either uh, the causes of cell death or perhaps the residue, the aftermath of cell death. And these plaques and tangles seem to be uh, at the root of certain kinds of, um, of cognitive loss. And that's something that's, um, that's studied now and is a pretty active area of research. And the current goal is to try to find ways to stave off um, those cognitive losses by even a few years. Because as we uh, live longer, uh, having a few years becomes very important.